Jelly Bean Fitzhenry and I'm going to show you how easy it is to paint this candy cane and holly leaves on a sheet of canvas and turn it into a wrap that can be put around a wine bottle or a vase or even a candle. It's been painted with the Deco Art Traditions. I love their nice rich colors and you can find other wrap designs on my website www.jillybean.net To begin the candy cane canvas wrap, you're going to start with a sheet of canvas that comes on a pad and that's available in most arts and crafts stores. There is a right and a wrong side to it. It does come already primed, so make sure when you pull it off the pad that it's uh, the top side that you're going to work with. It can be trimmed into any shape or size, which makes it really fun to use on different things. Um, I actually have already primed this one. Even though it comes primed, I still like to put a coat of the Traditions Light Primer down on the canvas before I get started. It gives it just a little bit smoother texture to work with. Then I've added uh, two coats of the Traditions Light Gray. Now for putting both of those on, you can use either a like a two inch foam brush or you can use like a one inch flat brush. Okay, so I've already got those primed. Then I want to measure where the edges are on my canvas and I can either just take some Scotch Magic Tape and tape both the top and the bottom um, so that I'll have that as a border area afterwards or I could measure with a ruler and a pencil and mark it off that way. Then you want to take your pattern and either trace it onto um, tracing paper or print it out of your computer or your uh, printer with vellum so that you can see through and see where you're working. I'm going to center that on my canvas and then I'll take graphite paper and slip that between the two so that I can transfer the pattern onto the canvas and I do prefer to use a stylus to trace with because I can get a much sharper line than if I use a pencil or a pen. Now when you're tracing your design try not to press too hard you want to be able to just have enough so that you can see it clearly yourself. I have put mine on just a little bit heavier so that it'll show up better in the camera so that you can see what I'm doing. But the lighter you make your graphite lines, the less cleanup you're going to have to do at the end of the process. So that's all we need to do to get started. The first step for painting the candy cane wrap will be to just base coat all the essential areas in to begin with. On my palette here, um, I have the colors laid out, the tradition colors, and um, already started some of the base coating, but I want to show you, even though base coating seems to be like something you maybe not have to think about too hard, I want to give you a couple little pointers that I find make it a little bit easier. I'll start with the uh, leaf and I'm using the yellow green light for the holly leaves. I'm going to use a round brush. You can use like a number two, number three round, something small. And I'll get some of the green on there. I kind of plump the brush up. Now if you need just a little teeny drop of water in the paint so that it comes off your brush easier, that's great. But try not to thin it down because this paint is so highly pigmented that I really can get um, this leaf filled in with just one coat. Uh, the other two holly leaves just took one coat to base those in, but if you start adding too much water then you're going to have to do a second coat. So let's try to use it uh, nice and creamy right from the bottle. And I just want to base in the entire leaf and 
smooth it out as best I can. So I might apply pressure when I first put the color down, but then I kind of lift up on the tips and then just very gently kind of smooth out any excess um, brush strokes. On the candy cane, I have alternating colors. I have medium white is actually what I'm using for the white stripes. There again, still using my small round and just fill in the candy cane stripes. If you need a touch of water, that's fine, but there again, this is covering in just one coat, which is great. I do try to um, cover my graphite lines as I go. So I've got the white, and then the next color is actually a mix of naphthol red and quinacridone violet. It's, and I like to just kind of brush mix. I, I love the color combinations that seem to magically appear when you mix them with your brush. Well, it's probably about equal parts, sometimes just a little bit more of the naphthol red. And I'm going to fill in all the red stripes with that red mix. Okay, now, normally I would recommend when you're um, doing the candy cane, once you do one color, let that dry before you do the next color because that way you'll be sure that you're not going to end up picking up any of the wet paint from the color that it's next to. Okay. The berries uh, are also the mix of the two colors. And I'm going to, there again, just kind of brush mix, get a little bit more of the quinacridone violet and the naphthol red. And I kind of plump the brush up because I want a lot of paint on the brush to fill in those round berries. And you can get a pretty nice round circle if you get that brush plumped up. Try not to add water unless I absolutely have to, but you know sometimes as the paint sits out during the day, you might need a little drop. You want it to be nice and fresh and creamy as it comes off your brush. Okay, then I have um, the little swirls that are coming out from the design. I've already got pink, red, and black on the one side. Now the pink color is actually a mix of quinacridone violet and white and it's just a matter of mixing a pretty pink color that you think is pretty. So I most often if I mix a color I start out half and half and then I take a look at it and decide if I need it a little lighter or darker and then I can adjust it. I am going to put a little drop of water in this because I want to get a thinner line this time and I'm using a small liner brush. And for the um, small circle here, I can actually start either direction. I'm going to go right on top of the graphite line and pull around in a swirl and kind of lift up, try not to put any pressure down when you start getting into that tighter little curl because sometimes the brush will kind of snap back at you. So I'm going to start from the opposite end now and finish reconnecting. If I have any graphite lines showing afterwards, I can come back with my base coat color, which was the gray the light gray and I can touch up the graphite lines. So I've got the pink and the red swirl was the mix of the quinacridone violet and the naphthol red. And that's also what I'm going to use to outline my um, candy cane as well. I want to be able to go all the way around my candy cane with this same color mix. And I do want this line just a little bit thicker because it's supposed to be part of a design as opposed to just, you know, cleaning up an edge on something that you may want a little bit thinner. So this line can be a little bit thicker. Uh, for the candy cane though, I do want that to be a little thinner, so I'm going to add a touch more water. And when I load that on my brush, I'm really going to kind of give it an extra little twist there to get the extra paint off. And I will come all the way around trying to cover my graphite lines. 
and go all the way around the candy cane with my red mix. I'm going to wait to outline the holly leaves until after I've um, done the um, shading and the highlighting because it just makes it a little bit easier and gives me a chance then to clean things up. But this will help sharpen up all your edges and then we're going to be ready for our shadows and highlights after. I've also um, in the swirl areas I also have uh, little green dots and some medium white squares. Now when you're doing the dots, if you're doing a bigger dot, I do like to use a round brush and I'll kind of plump it up with the color but then I go back and I kind of scoop up a little extra on the tip because I want that extra paint on there so that when I fill in that dot I'm going to get a little bit rounder circle that way. And get those filled in. Then for the square I'm going, I'm going to use uh, the medium white and I'm still using my round brush but this time I'm going to kind of flatten it out on my palette and get just a little bit more color on the tip but that will allow me to just kind of fill in a little bit of a square area. A little bit extra get the other square and I'm going to wait to fill in my circles that are throughout the background uh, wait for those to the very end otherwise for sure I know I will have my fingers in them so this is all you need to do to get it started and then you're going to let that dry and we'll come back and we'll start our shading and highlighting I've allowed my design to dry so now I'm ready to do some shadows on the candy cane and the leaves and this time I'm going to start by using a angle brush and I've got a quarter inch angle brush and I do like to kind of moisten the area that I'm going to do my shadows in with a, either a little bit of water if it's just a small project or if I have a larger area I'm working in then I do like to use the extender blending medium to kind of moisten the area it'll give me more time to blend I'm going to use um, the same uh, red mix that I used um, to fill the red candy cane parts in and I'm just going to get a little corner load on the angle brush and blend that a little bit on the palette to get the extra off. When I come down I want to go on the left side of the candy cane and I'm basically just going through my white stripes and because it matches the uh, red that's used in the red stripe I don't have to worry if I overlap into the red stripe so that's kind of nice but that little extra water that I put down first does give me just a little bit more time to blend now you'll notice that um, when I pull my brush I instead of just pulling one smooth stroke I like to kind of blend and pat that color in um, so that I can have a little bit easier time of getting that blended as opposed to just trying to do the shadow with just one stroke of the brush. I think it blends a little smoother if I play just a little bit. I've got uh, one more little spot that I want to get. I'm going to get just a little bit more of the red on the brush. Kind of blend that on the palette and I also want to get this little underneath this little curve up here as well. Now I do want to let that dry just a little bit. I am going to come back and I'm going to put some black in the red stripes but I want to let that dry so that I don't mess up the wet areas that I've got so far. So I am actually going to go to the green leaves next and on the green I'm actually using a little bit of the phthalo green yellow get a little bit squeezed out and this is such a bright pretty color but I am going to tone it down just a touch uh, with just a touch of the carbon black so let's off to the side here let's just put a little touch of the black into that and I don't need much of this color it's a real strong color so there's not you don't need a whole lot of it but that black will just kind of 
help tone it down. I want just a dark green that I can use on my leaves. Okay, and I am going to still use my angle brush, but I'm going to moisten the leaf first. Now, when I um, the amount of water that I need to use to moisten, actually what I do is I dip my brush in the water, and then I'll blot it on the paper towel. You'll kind of see the shine disappears if you hold your brush just right. And I am going to moisten the leaf with that. Now, if it feels like I've lost all the moisture in my brush, I may want to dip the brush in water again and come back and blot it. But if it still feels like it's okay, I'm going to go ahead and pick up just a little corner load of this green mix that I made and kind of wipe the extra off on the palette and I'm just going to come down the center vein and just kind of smooth that out. I do want it to come out a little bit more than where I've got it so let's pick up just a little bit more color on there and blend that and I'm just going to come down one side of each of the green leaves. The opposite side afterwards I will highlight Okay, so I'll rinse my brush, blot it on the towel, moisten the next leaf. Only moisten one leaf at a time. Um, if you try to do them all and go back, you're not you're gonna run out of moisture. It's gonna dry up on you. So one leaf at a time. I can start from either end, and you'll notice I didn't go all the way to the tip. I left a little space at the very tip, but I can go all the way to the base where it touches the berries. Now my very last stroke as I pull I tried no pressure just barely tickle the surface and you can kind of smooth out the excess brush strokes. Okay, moisten the last leaf and <clears throat> I'm not really paying attention to light source on this so you can pick either side that you want to shade or highlight Okay, and one last time here. Get that last leaf, a little bit of the green mix, and then I'll let that dry. Okay, in the meantime, I think that my red is probably dry enough to go ahead and get started. I'm going to just moisten just the upper half of the red stripes this time and then a little corner load of the carbon black. Now you don't need much so really get rid of all that extra color on there and that's going to go right along the edge. That'll be the shadow on the red. Now I will be coming back between the two stripes and adding a stripe of some uh, white and some red in or some pink in there afterwards. So if you're not real clean between the two colors you'll have another chance to kind of fix that up again. So I've got the upper half with my darker shadow. Then I'm going to rinse my brush, blot it on the towel, and I want to get the last two red areas on the bottom half of the candy cane and just get a little corner load of the carbon black and get that on the rest of the red on the bottom. Okay, so I have my shadows on the candy cane. I didn't put shadows on the berries. Those are going to be highlighted afterwards. So that's actually it for the shadows right now. Later I will come back and I'll do a shadow um, around the outside edge of the candy cane, but that has to be the very last thing. Moisten the next leaf. A little corner load. Come down the opposite side of the center vein. Okay, I've given my candy cane a chance to dry. Now I want to put the highlight that goes through the very center of it. And let's just take a look real quick at the finished sample here. Uh, when you look at the center of the candy cane, you're going to notice that there's a transparent, kind of a wide white stripe and then in the middle of that is a thin solid white line and a little dot at the 
beginning and end. Now, it might be just a little bit scary doing this step, but it's really not so bad. I'm going to start out with my round brush and I am adding some water into the titanium white paint. I want it to be real transparent, so I'm mixing a little puddle here and I usually like to blot that on the paper towel because I usually end up getting too much in the brush as I mix that. So a little blot on the towel for a little extra safety would be good. Okay, I can start either way, either at the top or at the bottom. I'm going to use the round brush. I don't want to touch the end. I want to, you know, get close to where the end is. And I do want this to be kind of a fat stripe. And I go up till I run into the berries. Maybe reload. And then start from the top, right through the center of everything. And pulling down till I run into the berries again. Then I'm going to switch to my liner brush and this time I want solid white. I'll put a little white dot and I could use a stylus to put that on there also. Um, little titanium white dot in the top and the bottom and then I do want just a drop of water so that it comes off my brush easily but now I don't want it transparent. I want this to be more solid. So just enough water that it'll flow off the tip of the brush but you want to try to keep it as solid as possible and I've got extra water in my brush so I was just blotting it on the towel there. Okay, um, see if you can get a solid white knot line now dead center right in the middle of your transparent one and this will give you that final shine for your candy cane. On the berries, I use uh, medium white and I want to just outline the very top and get a little drop of water in there. Just want to outline the top edge. If you get too much water, it kind of needs to get blotted on that towel. Okay, I just want to get the very top edge of the berries so that they show up. I don't want them as bright as the other white, so that's why I went back to the medium white. And just kind of outline that top edge so that they stand out a little bit better. And put a little dot with the medium white in each berry as well. For the holly leaves, I want to outline uh, the edges of the holly leaves, and I'm going to use the Thalo green yellow and remember that had just a touch of black in it so that it wasn't quite so bright. About half paint, half water and I'm going to do um, the same side that I shaded and I'm not going to do the very first stroke. I'm going to start down on the next curve and I'm going to outline those edges so that you should have like three curves on each of the leaves. You could be creative and add little curlies on the tips if you want to afterwards. It's fun to just kind of experiment and play with it a little bit. I'm also going to add um, a little uh, stroke on each side of the shadow with the same color, little vein line. Okay, then on the opposite side I'm going to use my yellow-green mix and remember that was your yellow and a little touch of the phthalo green yellow in there. More of a neon kind of a green, yellow-green and then add a little drop of water to that so that you can get a thinner line, kind of twist the brush, get the extra paint off of that. And then if I want, I can actually push down and make a little bit fatter um, beginning and then pull to a thinner tail for these. So it's almost more like a little kind of a comma stroke or a teardrop type effect that you're adding on this side. I'll get 
this one here at the bottom there again kind of a rounded beginning and then kind of pull to a little bit thinner tail as you curve down into the next section now you're also going to want to do something down the center vein and it could be either color it just depends on which color do you think you want to show up do you want it the yellow or do you want it the darker green color either one is fine I'm going to get the next section now if I start at the opposite end I can kind of push down a little bit as I end and get that same little rounded beginning so because I don't want to turn my piece here for the camera I'm going to kind of do the stroke backwards which is fine so and then push down to get that little fatter end on it and I also want to use this color to pull the little veins two little strokes on each side of the holly leaves with that okay one more thing that I can do to this before I let this dry and that will be to add the little white dots that are sprinkled I still want to come back after and um, add a black shadow next to the candy cane but I really did do that after these dots were all dry so that the ones that were close to the candy cane then will kind of sink down into the design a little bit so I'm just using a stylus to dot all these little white dots on there just gives a little bit extra color into the design I'm almost done with the design I just have to shade on the outside edge of the candy cane and add my background dots and then I'll be ready for my fun little border in order to shade the candy cane I'm going to turn it upside down so that it's a little bit easier for me to reach I am going to moisten the area with some water first and I want to kind of go under the candy cane and I'm actually going to go right through um, those dots that are on there water on the brush blot it on your towel moisten the area and you know it wouldn't even hurt if you put some on the leaves and the berries because it'd be a little bit of a safety net in case you mess into them it'll make it easier to wipe off that extra color from there I'm going to take a little corner load of the carbon black you don't need much it's a strong color and I'm going to get rid of the extra on my palette and I'll start down at the base of the candy cane and go right next to the cane and I want to try to stay out of my leaf if I can help it get a little bit more paint kind of sneak some between the leaf and the candy cane then I can put my brush down a little flatter come up under the curl get just a little bit more on there I want it pretty dark right next to the cane itself and a little bit also under that top tip that we have and just kind of try to smooth that away you could um, use a little mop brush if you needed to or even a blending brush if you have trouble getting it to blend smooth enough I'm going to get just a little bit more black in there because I, I do want it pretty dramatic so a little bit more black next to the edge of the candy cane and you could let it dry and come back and do a second coat with your floated color if you needed to that's just about just about good enough I think okay then the only other part that's left would be to do my little red circles uh, throughout the background and I have a choice I can either go back and use my red mix which was the quinacridone violet and the naphthol red or I could just use the naphthol red straight whichever you prefer you you can choose it's 
just kind of fun sometimes to play with the colors. I'm back using my round brush. I really want to plump that color up on the brush and then kind of scoop up a little extra so that when I go to make my round circles I've got a lot of paint on there that I can just kind of fill in each of those circles. You'll notice when you look at the pattern um, I've kind of got um, once I get away from the design, I've got them in a little bit of a pattern. It'll be three dots, two dots, three dots, two dots. So, so a lot of times I like to just kind of eyeball it. But I did measure it a little bit more careful for your pattern. And you'll just go through it and get all those filled in. So I'm going to let these circles dry and I will come back and I'll show you how to do the green border. My candy cane design is all done now except for the border. And for the border what I want to do is I actually want to put some Scotch Magic tape down and you do want to make sure that your design is totally dry because this is going to go on top of it. I want to leave anywhere from a half inch to five eighths inch uh, space for the top and bottom of the border. And I'll put the tape down and then I really want to seal that edge where I'm going to be putting paint up against so that it doesn't sink underneath. You could use the end of a brush, you can use a coin, if you've got a, a good fingernail you could use your fingernail. Just really get that pushed down there solid. And I have tape on the bottom here as well. Okay, then I'm going to start by basing in the area with yellow green light. I'm going to switch to like a half inch flat brush and I'm going to use the paint pretty much straight from the bottle. I just need one coat and I'm just going to kind of quickly get that spread on there. Go all the way across right up to the tape. Then I'm not going to wait for that to dry. I'm going to go ahead and start right in with the next step. So that's on there pretty good. Okay, so then um, I'll just kind of wipe the extra off on my paper towel, but I don't really need to clean it. Then I've got the uh, Traditions Light Pearl, which will start adding some shimmer. And so I'm going to kind of get that on the brush. And I want you to kind of think about making the letter X. I, I slip slap is what I call it, but it's almost like you're making a letter X as you're filling that in and you're going to kind of slip slap that across the entire border just kind of like making that letter X and I want to want to really kind of get some of those edges too so that I don't have so much of the green showing through on its own just kind of slip slap in I'm using the paint generously and it's got a nice shimmer to it perfect for Christmas. Now if you get too carried away and you lose too much green you could certainly go back put some more on but this is just kind of a nice little transparent color. Then I, because I have yellow highlights in the leaves I decided I wanted just a touch of that Hansa yellow in there as well and I don't want to get too carried away with this. I'm going to be a little bit more careful. Maybe even just, you know, mix a little of the uh, light pearl in there too to kind of soften it up. Just a gentle little light touch now as you kind of slip slap some of that across the border. And whenever you think it's pretty, you're done. Sometimes I like to put a little bit of pink in there. I could put quinacridone violet in or even a little bit of the naphthol red. But if I put either of those colors in, I would want to mix them with the light pearl. Now, I don't wait for it to dry. I am going to actually go ahead and pull my tape off. And you're going to see you get a nice clean edge after you pull that tape off. I would let this dry 
and then when you come back I put a um, red border on and you can either do the red mix or you can use just the naphthol red straight right from the bottle so I'm going to put out a little bit of naphthol red and I'm going to use a little bit um, longer uh, liner brush this time, more of a script, and I'm going to thin down that red, about half paint, half water. And I'm going to pull this design down just a bit because when I do the edge of a design, and I, I do recommend that you let your, your piece dry before you do this step, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot. When I'm doing the design, I'm going to go right on the edge of my border here, and I kind of keep my little finger on the outside edge as I pull to try to keep a straight line so holding my hand a little bit stiff moving my whole arm and pulling kind of using my finger as a guide and I can go back and touch in carefully touch in and add more until it's as solid of a line as I need it to be. Okay, and that's all you need to do. Then, once um, your design is completely dry, I uh, finish it off with a couple coats of the Tradition Satin Varnish, and then I use glue dots that are available in the scrapbooking aisle to adhere it to your um, bottle and so here's let's take a look at the final piece um, I would wrap this around the bottle and then overlap it in the back and I would take glue dots to adhere it to each other they're almost they're sticky they're almost like a, a little bit of a rubber cement type thing but that way you'll be able to pull it apart and reuse it on other things so hope you enjoyed this project and I'll look forward to sharing some more with you Thank you.